Ooh, good morning. About 6 a.m. Got a good couple of hours sleep. Car's packed up, ready to go. We've got a three hour journey, so let's get back into the drive. Day two, baby. Heading up to James Price Point, and we are doing a quick check of the vehicle because we thought the road was sealed, and maybe this is, maybe we're on the wrong road, we're not sure, as we have no internet signal up here. But the corrugations are making everything move around, so we're doing a quick check of the tyres and the inside of the van. Let's see. Okay, well, we've got soft stuff on the floor, it's okay. Notepads, I can deal with that. Randomly a teaspoon. Sure, but where did that and all this dirt has come from somewhere? I swept before. I'm not sure what that's doing. But everything in here looks good. I am very impressed. Yeah. I thought there'd be more things that have moved around. Okay, well that's pretty good. How are the tires? Everything's fine. All good? Yeah. I'm gonna see he's going slow is one solution, going super slow. The other solution is going at like 60 or 70 and then you sort of glide over the the corrugates the only issue with that is if you do that then if there is a big depression this road has been going from relatively corrugated to just like washed out and like some big divots and like if you're going at 80 then it's gonna be pretty hard to slow down but i don't know if we can go as slow as we need to, to get over these so i think we try and get up to speed and we yeah. see how we go all right yeah, let's do it It just feels bad, so yeah, yeah. Getting up to speed, horrible. At 60, we were definitely gliding over them a bit more. But the issue was, yes, you're gliding over them, mm -hmm. but even then, you're starting. It's all sand, so you're starting to get a bit of like movement as well when you're hitting some. So I think we're just gonna, you know, it says 18 minutes, 19k. So maybe it's gonna take us double or triple that. But we'll just cruise along, you know, nice and slow. We'll get there in one piece. We'll get there eventually. How good this looks. Cliff top camping, eh? That view is gonna take a long while to get old. Also not a bad view from the bed either. Let me show you this view. This is absolutely insane. So we've pulled up at James Price's Point, which is about an hour out of Broome. It's a bit windy, so I excuse the noise but it's an hour out of broom and look at this view behind me. This is nuts. So you pull up, we're in the fourth campsite along and you pull up on these red okra cliffs and then you've got three 60 degree views from the van of the beach, the water, the waves and just nature. And this is the kicker, it's absolutely free. You're not paying a cent to be here bush camp, you bring your own water, you bring your own things, you take out your rubbish, all the usual, but absolutely free. And then you've got views that rival most bloody hotels in the world. So this is insane. This is the whole reason that we've come to WA. Beaches like this, camps like this, being able to put the van there and then explore this place and have a fire and just have all your stuff this close to nature. Pretty bloody perfect. Down some pretty corrugated roads in parts, but we just dropped the tire pressure 
down to about 20 psi on the car and the van and that saved our bums a little bit so we weren't juddering all the way and actually helped you know the suspension and stuff make it a bit softer and less wear and tear on the car and van so that was fine we've gotten here we've set up and yeah time to go and explore Come down to the beach and we haven't been as lazy as it looks because yes our van is just up on the cliff up there and we've driven down but it's probably about a 15 minute walk because you've got to go all the way around so couldn't really resist a bit of beach driving so we've driven down and apparently all along this coastline there's dinosaur fossilized dinosaur footprints we figured we'd come down check out a couple of the rock pools see what we could find and see if we can spot any footprints in all of this rock that is getting slowly exposed as the tide goes out. And the tides here are massive, so I think they're like nine meter tides or 10 meter tides or something. So in about, you know, an hour or so, two hours, all of this behind me, we'll be able to walk out on. And hopefully that exposes a lot of these footprints that are apparently around here. Or maybe we'll just be wandering around in rock pools for the afternoon. Either way, it's gonna be pretty, pretty fun. Shit, I'd rather find your side Really feeling that I like Every little time that I Get a chance to close my eyes If you're gonna make it soon Maybe we could get our room But I need some rest from gloom Otherwise I feel I'm doomed You be looking over like you really know me Well, these footprints are elusive to say the least we haven't seen any yet. Not that we've noticed anyway. Maybe take a picture, take a couple guess of free. I don't want to give another guarantee. Look me in the eyes for now, run away with me. Or to a place that you thought you never really see. You'd be looking funny when you're living so free. But all I ever was afraid to take. Too many things I prayed that they were wrong But I'm still happy now Just think of what could be If I was still around The schedules were free Waking up every morning to that view is never getting old. I spend about half an hour every morning just staring out of the window from bed, just taking it in and watching the waves. I mean, how lucky can you get? Free campsite, that view, definitely a winner. Anyway, this morning we're gonna jump back in the Ranger. We're gonna head down the Corrigate Road again to a place called Bard Creek. Apparently you can fish there and swim. Uh, not to be confused with Willis Creek, Willis Creek apparently has a croc in it. So I don't know if we'll swim, it depends what it looks like when we get there, but jump in the car, go check it out. Most of this road's pretty good, but there's a couple of patches where you're just like... <laughs> yeah, look at your hands shaking on the steering wheel. I think Duncan is enjoying driving <laughs> along these roads way too much. How good is it though? When you're not on the corrugate bits and you're just on this orange sand, 20 psi, you're just flying along buttery smooth. I love it. Ooh. Yeah. 
can definitely get close to the bushes along this road. Definitely reaching the softer sand. So we've just stopped the car. This junk has pointed out that this bush here looks like samphire. Samphire is one of the ingredients we're going to use to cook with later on. So, taking a closer look. And the lady did say that it grew up here, right? Yeah, she actually gets it from this area, so it very well could be. Now, let me grab a few pieces and show you. This is so cool. Like, you've got all these like separate little parts that do break off, like that. From what we bought from the lady, this is identical. So I don't know if you need to cure it or, you know, pickle it or something to make it edible, but kind of tastes sort of like salty. That's insane. I know they forage all the way around here, but if that's how abundantly it grows, just literally on the side of the road, then we could come back and forage our own sand fire for the salad next time. Or I'm eating something I shouldn't be and I'm going to get really, really sick, but it looks the same and it tastes pretty much similar. So very cool. Literally on the side of the road as we are driving along to the beach and it's everywhere. Like all these plants here, as far as I can see, has sand fire. Nice. So after a bit of drone recon, I'm going to leave the car there. I'm going to check it every now and then. We're about an hour away from high tide, so I think it should be fine where it is. But the tides do come up a lot here, so I'll come back and check it every now and then. And we're going to head along here a little bit further, just along the rocks, looking for a good spot to fish. And I don't know a whole lot about rod and reel fishing. My assumptions here are that mangroves, the tide's coming back in, I know it's better to fish early morning or late evenings, but we're not here then, so we're gonna go out regardless. And we're gonna find a nice little spot where the water's coming back in near the mangroves, hopefully where a lot of the sort of feeder fish are. A lot of the smaller ones are attracting in the bigger ones. We're gonna cast in and see if we can't catch something. Definitely not dressed for fishing. This is my swimming outfit. But we just rigged up these rods with apparently what's good up here, pretty big hooks. Apparently that's for catching barra and so on. So we'll see what we, we get. I'm gonna wade into here and uh, yeah, cast out. Fishing is still a fun activity for us, not catching fish. That's because we don't usually catch anything. So if we catch anything, it will suddenly become a very competitive sport for us. Who says guys can't multitask? I'm fishing, but I'm getting my swim because that's what I really wanted. Cool enough. Definitely looking out for crocs and sharks though. Oh. And Eric Kanji. I would chill here. The bait that we're actually using now, which is recommended to us by the guy in the camping store for the, as the perfect bait to use in this area, is probably bigger than any of the fish I've ever caught. <laughs> Did they take your bait? Yeah. Oh, cheeky buggers. All right, watch this. So dunk casts. And then there's a seagull right over here, just sitting there, waiting for the bait to land in the water. Watch this seagull, literally. Here they come. Before, they were waiting for the bait to hit the water and just before it sinks under, they try and take it off the hook. Sneaky little MFers. They're sneaky, but they're smart, right? Bloody like... rats in the sky. Of the, the old chip thief, now the bait thief. Anyway, at least we're feeding something. Not bad, not yeah. bad. 
I got it straight and in the water. And what bait are you using? Oh, so you got a tip off our next door neighbour the other day for squid. So I think if I use squid and Dunk uses a different fish, then we're doubling our chance of catching something. That's my logic. Yeah, you're using the bait I got and I'm using the bait you got. So yeah. I don't know if we just, that's indicative of how little confidence we have in our own decisions, but... Mm -hmm. Alright, well, now we play the waiting game. Yeah. How long do we wait for a fish? I've heard people out all day not catching anything. It's definitely a sport which teaches you a lot of patience because it's not guaranteed and it's not quick. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> and I'm impatient as hell and that's why I spearfish and don't rod and reel fish. So I've probably got tops an hour in me. Sorry to all you proper fishermen, I'm just not one of you. Anyway, if Soph enjoys it, I'll come along for the ride. I'm just casting. I'm hoping. Slowly reeling in and hoping. There's an art to fishing and I just haven't, uh, haven't done the research to understand it yet. I'm more of like pray and spray. I'll go around. What is it when you machine gun? Spray and pray. So I'm switching up my bait. I was using squid. Now I'm going with the herring. So the chap in the broom fishing and camping store that I popped to recommended this for this area. So <laughs> if this doesn't work, then it's definitely me. And I'm also switching up fishing locations. So I've come off the rocks. I'm going to go there into the mangroves. Don't know if it's going to be a better spot, but I figured something's not working over there. So let's try here. And if all else fails, I'm going to go for a swim and cool off. Swimming here is just what I wanted. We have got a busy day ahead, so don't tell me I can't take too long. Just a quick dip, cool off, get back in the car, get back to camp. So we've got a few extra things planned, which I have been looking forward to for so long. This is gonna be the highlight, I reckon, of this part of the trip, for me anyway. <laughs> All right, let's go. Put you in that mood you like Spirit moving Now loosen you up You don't care who cares Look at you now It's magic Filling up glasses Looking like an actress hey, You just want to listen to a classic Bouncing like a mattress Man, I'm out of practice here. And then We have all this space here It's like it's been made for a campfire In there Perfect Is that the spot? This is the spot Righto, fourth time's a charm. This is how pedantic we are at picking a spot. <laughs> We've driven to five different spots now, but this, this seems like the one. We've got a nice bench seat, place for the fire. Yeah. We've got a bit of structure from a visual point of view next to us, and then the beach, the thing, and the sun setting behind us, and we've got a bit of water. So, very pedantic of us, but I think this is the spot. Yeah, we're I like, agree. We're like a cat that like walks around and like pads the ground until it finally <laughs> finds a spot. <laughs> God. Okay, cool. Let's get into cooking. So show stop but go knock on my house. You've been like champagne that shook up for days. Show stop but can't lock you down. Go get loose like you used to do. On the wheel. I know you do it, but how do you deal? I see how all of it's making you feel. Let's move to Finland. I think I'm for real. Let's go, let's go. I've got the fire set up and going. We're burning all that down, trying to get some hot coals for part of dinner, which I'll be making. And so over here using the utility tray that lives up to its name. The U tray pretty much come worktop, bench top, bar, cooktop, everything, chef's table. And you're gonna be Using some Australian natives, which is yes. pretty cool. So, what do you uh, what do you think you're making for dinner? Yeah, I'm wanting to I wanted to cook with native Australian goods for so long. So, I found a lady in Broome, and I've pretty much bought most things on her website. I reckon. First thing is kakadu plum bush ducker. So, I'm going to mix this in with some hummus, make hummus from scratch because I think that's going to taste sensational. Second of all, I'm going to make kind of like a take on the salt and pepper squid. So, squid from the local area, 
with some salt bush and pepperberry with this stuff which grows on the cliffs up here this is samphire australian sea asparagus so to mix that through make a salad with some fresh mint that should be pretty good yeah nice and let's see if it tastes anything like the samphire we thought we found earlier today know. yeah and then i'm going to be using my fire here and a little camp oven and i'm going to be making some damper with a little butter so i'm going to make damper in a camp oven with a little native australian herbs um, probably the bit of the bush and so on make a butter out of that so i don't know how much more dinky dye true blue aussie you can get than australian native butter on a bit of damper so that'll go with the awesome dinner sophie's making that's my contribution i I think I still remember how to make damper from when I was a kid. It's pretty easy. I think it's like flour, water, a bit of salt, maybe a little bit of butter, chuck in the camp oven and we should be onto a winner. I hope it's as easy as I remember because with Sophie making all that, I don't want to be the one that messes up the, uh, the meal, but I've got the easy job. So I think I might be okay. We wanted a drink to go with our feast today. So we swung by the Moontide Distillery when we were in Broome. We'd heard great things and when I picked up the botanicals, Auntie Pat there, she said they actually use all their botanicals from her. So not only is it distilled here in the Kimberley, but it uses all the native Australian ingredients from here as well. So it's like tamarind, sandalwood, juniper, coriander seeds, lemon myrtle, and they use all the monsoonal rain rather than tap water rain to make it taste super fresh, clean, and delicious. As you can see, we've already tried it and can attest to its deliciousness. Every good dinner starts with a gin and soda. I love that excuse. <laughs> it is made from local botanicals and we did go to the distillery and there's a lot of good reasons why I've got that gin. But I'd like to point out that it's also just nice to have a gin and soda on the beach here. So we have justified it, but we are doing it because we want it. Let's move to Finland, I think I'm for real. Let's go, let's go, let's go. First we need a drink in a resto Two shots now, you caught your wave Moonwalk, yeah, you got your stage I know you've been working for what you already purchased This side of the beach Beautiful blue skies Sunny, happy days This side of the beach We are looking like the bowels of hell have opened And we're about, that's like the darkest darkness I've ever seen like If I take my glasses off Nah, that's still pretty dark. So <laughs> we are literally here about to start cooking and <laughs> just wondering if we're gonna get super lucky and get missed by that insane storm. But I reckon if it starts pelting down, we'll just jump in the back of the car and hopefully wait it out because the storms are pretty quick up here, but that's nuts. Literally tropical island beautifulness, <laughs> scary ass darkness, and hell has come. Winter has arrived. <laughs> what is it? The White Walkers. The White Walkers. Winter is coming. There's going to be an ice dragon coming out of those clouds and just freezing us all to death. And yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. So beach cooking. It would be too easy if it was a nice sunny day and nothing went wrong. So this is adventuring, baby. How's that? Wet. We quite literally, Ooh. well the fire will be going out anyway. So <laughs> we got the fire going, ready to make hot coals. Started to make the damper and I thought we might get super lucky and the rain would just miss us. But you can see now it definitely hasn't because it is just getting heavier and heavier and heavier. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back in the car. I don't know, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if we waited out. Um, and then carry on. I don't know how long we might be here for. We're right in the middle of it at the moment, so it's just wall of white, yeah. water either side. Can't see a break in the clouds anymore. No, and if our fire's gone out by the time we, by the time the rain stops, then that might be a bit difficult to start it again because I only brought the kindling and the starter down for it. We've got a bit more of the big logs, but we'll see. Hopefully, there's a bit of coals there, or. It might be the most uneventful, <laughs> great Australian cook-up ever, but I feel like this is very apt for what Australia is actually like. It's not all sunshine and beautiful beaches. 
it is a lot of the time. It is a lot. It has been the last couple of days. <laughs> it's been like the last couple of weeks. But it's also this, this sort of crazy, heavy tropical rain. And yeah, so not sure. Not sure what we'll do, but at the moment we're here. I just went to check whether we were all good. Are we? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, everything that's still out there is getting very wet, <laughs> including myself. I was only out there for two minutes. Yeah, not even. Absolutely soaked. What's interesting is what I wanted to check is it looked like the tide was coming back in and I was like, oh geez, we might want to start moving, uh. but it's actually just all the water that's falling is going out to sea and it looks like that it looks like the tides come back in, but then it's like wet to dry to ocean again. So Jesus. Anyway, I don't know, how long do we want to wait here for? Do we do we try and wait it out? The fly is looking like it's going to be out in the, in the next five minutes if it keeps raining. Yeah, there is definitely no break in the clouds, <laughs> but I reckon we give it a good 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Jeez, I am soaked. All right. Hope our caravan's okay. We'll be the first to know about it if it's not. <laughs> it's going to fly <laughs> off that cliff down here. I must admit, oh, oh. are you going to hear that? You get that set off the alarm in the caravan, you can oh, see yeah. it flashing. Those vibrations have set it off. Do you reckon it goes off every time? It hears the like, like it gets yeah. vibrations like that? Yeah. I wonder if I can turn it off from down here. I can feel that thunder in the car. Yeah, yeah. So that's obviously what's affecting the alarm. We think the wind that's hitting us as well, that'd be even more insane up on top of that cliff. I just have images that our van is just gonna go <laughs> and end so, up there. <laughs> And there's nothing you'd be able to do about no, it. No, you just watch you it, eh? Hey? You just watch it fly <laughs> on and you'd be like, oh, guess we're sleeping in the swag tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like to give up on things, but I think we abandon the beach for now. And if it does let up again, we come back down. But yeah. best laid plans. I mean, you can't plan for the weather. You can't. And if we didn't show you this, we didn't show you mm -hmm. the realities of this and just tried to make it look like we're only out in beautiful yeah. weather then we would be lying to you because this is reality of traveling and quite often <laughs> when we want to do something, something like this happens and we're just the left going. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I do commit, we're still going to do damper and the yeah. Australian cook up. Hey, All right. that's traveling. So I'll go the chairs and everything we still have outside. I'll yeah. check on back the U tray. Let's cruise up the top of the hill and uh, we'll see if we come back down again. All right. Okay, I am soaked. Everything is just precariously. Oh my god, how much water's coming off me? Yeah. Everything's just precariously put on top of the U tray on the tray lid. So hopefully, if we go slowly, nothing falls off. Keep an eye on the back. If stuff falls off, let me know and I'll jump out and put it back on. Won't be needing these sunnies. <laughs> Chuck them away. <laughs> Out there, that looks like Mars. <laughs> Quite literally does. What are you doing over there in that puddle? I'm trying to wash my feet off before <laughs> I get back in the car. But you're going to have to walk back over the red dirt to get back in the car. This is nuts. I know. Jeez, it's already caked up our tyres as well. I don't know if we're going to get up that. And there are my tyre tracks. They've just absolutely sunk into this mud going up and you can see up there that the path's actually starting to wash away as well. So I'm concerned if I go up there, one tire's gonna drop and we're just gonna get stuck on that hill. Because that whole, our whole car would disappear into that. But that's, I guess I'm saying, one thing of rain has just washed out that much of the road. And I don't know if you get a sense of scale, but I could quite easily stand in that hole and my head would still be under it. And this is nuts, so. <laughs> I'm avoiding the hell out of this side of the road. It is pretty boggy, but we might have better luck. <laughs> okay, I'm getting back in the car because that was right overhead. At least everything is brown around here. So if I do shit myself when the thunder goes off on top, you wouldn't know. I could just say I fell over. But that is nuts, so I don't know if we're going to get up it, but we can give it a red hot crack. Yes. 
considered right at the beginning and I was thinking, oh God. Oh God, here we go, mm. fish tailing all the way up. Ooh. Yeah? That was good. Well, not, not the beach camp cook that I was expecting for tonight, but that's okay. These things happen. You cannot plan for the weather. What's the saying? The show must go on. Here we are. Okay. I've got all my ingredients out, back from the ranger. I'm going to get straight into making this squid and I cannot wait to taste what the lemon myrtle, pepper berry and salt bush taste like all together. I think it's going to be a winning combination. Okay, determined to get this damper going. I've lit a fire outside, used a couple of fire lighters, so I did cheat, but everything was really wet, so I feel like it's even. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make some damper. So back to literally where I was before, chucking in some wholemeal flour. I'm gonna add some salt bush, which is the native Australian herb that should give this pretty unique flavor. Get my wattle seed in. Okay, so salt bush, wattle seed. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in as well because the salt bush has a unique flavour but I still like a bit of salt in there. Pinch of salt. And then, if I remember correctly, the next step is just adding some water. Start stirring. It smells Keep... really good. I can smell that wattle. Yeah, the wattle's mm. got a really interesting smell. It's almost like a, like a sort of smoky, woody smell to it. It's definitely getting doughier. Look like we've got a little, good little ball of damper here. And they say don't knead it, but just cup it in your hands. So hopefully that's what I'm doing here. Australian damper with wattle seed and salt bush and a little bit of actual salt and a tiny bit of butter. And then we'll chuck that in the camp oven. Hopefully we get some damper out of it. Let's see. It's the first time I've used camp oven to cook this, so we will see what that turns out like. So I mixed in the coconut flour, the salt bush, the pepper berry, and the lemon myrtle, and that is going to coat our squid. It smells insane. That is so good. I think it's important to call out the fact that it's now nine o'clock and both Soph and I looked at each other and we're like, we're hot, we're sweaty, we're hungry, yeah. and we're still trying to film and cook this. And I wanted to set the record straight because the reality of this is you can, in the edit, you can make this look glamorous and as nice as possible, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't show the realities of being on the road and filming and things going wrong mm. and <laughs> quite literally had everything ready to go on that beach, heaven's opened and now we're back here. It's nine o'clock at night and I'm trying to cook damper on a fire that keeps going out. Beep. Sophie's still monstering, <laughs> trying to get through making her squid and yeah, you got to show these parts. You got to show these parts. It's not all Instagram and everything going right. So it's not all sunny days and no. glorious traveling. Things go wrong, things break. And if you ever think about doing this trip, if I didn't tell you from our side the bad bits and just mm. show you the good, I'd feel like an absolute... Yeah. You know what? So yeah, this is, this is the realities. And at some point tonight, we may even eat and it'll probably look really, really nice. But I wanted to make sure that you knew 
the pain, the effort, the suffering, <laughs> yeah. and just like the general discomfort that goes into mm. it. So it's not all just like, look at this lovely meal we made here, ta and it's ta-da, and nice B-roll sequence of how nice all the food yeah. looks. So yeah. Which you'll have as well, but. Which you might have, I don't know. <laughs> if I, it uh, looks good. Uh, <laughs> our effort and attitude is, is waning by the second. I think we need some food in us. Mm. I must admit, I'm eyeing off the two minute noodles in the cupboard and just going, maybe I could just cook those up and not worry about the rest yeah. of this. Anyway, there's some honesty for you. Here for you, whatever you need. All I've got to do is watch the damper. So, yeah, you need water. I'm there. You need a new gin. New gin. I do need a new gin. I need a new gin. Duncan is the best bartender in the world. By best, you mean just makes drinks constantly. Just, just has got a lot of practice in. Just, just keeps making them. <laughs> Probably worst bartender if you are worried about making money or RSA. But hey, <laughs> in my own caravan, I'm the best bartender around. Put the damper out. And I must admit, I've had to cut off a bit of a burnt bit on the bottom. And this one, I've cut it off entirely. But that was because not getting enough heat, literally the only part that was getting heat was the bottom of the camp oven. So I've got off the burnt bits. Smells pretty good. Cinnamon, dukkha, pretty much every spice Sophie had, I put in there. And that's a little butter to go with it. Oh, so, that looks good. 10 p.m., time to eat. Yeah. Damper was a highlight. I liked the smokiness and the nutty flavour. Plus, you made an excellent hummus and a delicious butter. I've been using this like a dip and I should <laughs> really have remembered that it's pretty much just butter. Epic Australian cook-up on a beach, which wasn't on a beach, <laughs> which is now in a caravan, which is, you know, don't get confused. We've been changing it up all day. So yeah, done, food done. Mm. Bedtime. I think bedtime, yeah? Yeah. Uh, apparently we've got to do a shot that shows us going to bed. So this is that shot. Walking to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Big yawn. Oh, I'm so tired. Righto, come on. Oh. I hope that looked good. <laughs> oh, you get a sweaty moustache. I'm sweaty all over. It's pretty hot in the van tonight. We're going to have the little 12 volt fan on. Finally got one. And yeah. Do you want to finish us off with a typical end shot? Oh, yeah. yeah? I, I know this one. Night, guys. <laughs>